Hello everyone, it's Caitlin. Today we're going to be working on some workwoman guide projects, um, namely a nightgown bag to carry a wrapper in a nightgown, a tidy or dressing case, and a housewife. We're making a, it's called a tidy, um, is what the workman's guy has it out to be. And it's essentially the uh, toilet bag that we made for the 1850s. Um, actually, nearly exactly. <laughs> so we're going to make it again. Uh, reading through the workman's guy, it turns out that all the decisions that I made in making the brown 1850s ones were totally correct. So this one even says to line it and then put the pockets on the lining, and then, like, all the decisions that were made. Or perhaps is very correct, which makes me really happy <laughs> that my uh, assumptions were correct. But now we actually are going to make this one. So what I did is I took the image on um, a digital copy of the copy of the Workwoman's Guide and I um, enlarged it and I made it to the size I wanted it to be. So the Workwoman's Guide says it needs to be five and a quarter wide. There is no way that that would work for me because my brush is nine inches long. <laughs> I did make it a little bit different, but, and the only other thing I changed about the pattern itself is that this piece was a piece this, the, it was the same width, actually a little bit less, it was this width, it was two inches. Um, and I made that smaller because that's gonna hold my toothbrush. So what I'm essentially thinking about doing is brushes and combs in this one, a toothbrush, I think soap, hairpins, and then these three can be, um, or, you know, let's have, um, pomade and, um, tooth powder. So all my little circular containers can go just right up here. And the Workman's Guide has this actually as another pocket, and I'm not sure how that's going to work, because I don't see anywhere, like, I don't see an opening. So I, I guess it would open down here, and you would put stuff in there. I think I might just leave that off because I'm not sure about the logistics of that and I don't really need it. So really the only thing that this one does not have that the other one had was um, a spot for mending or and or um, sewing. And I'm thinking I just might make a separate housewife and just keep it. Because all this and a couple other things are going to go into another bag we're going to make next, the nightgown bag. Um, which is right directly above this on the workwoman's guide. And so I can just stick a housewife in the nightgown bag and therefore I don't need to put any type of sewing thing in this. It can just be a toilet set, um, bag for toiletries. So we're going to work on that. So I'm going to use blue polished cotton for this. It says to use Russia duct or other sturdy stiff fabrics. So I figured um, polished cotton is going to answer for that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut two of this. Um, one for the back and one for the lining, which is what the pockets are going to put on. I might leave this just a little bit longer, just to make sure that the uh, brush is going to fit. All right, so it'll fold up probably more something like this which is quite convenient, I would say. All right, so I have those two pieces. Now we can work on pockets. What I need to do first is figure out how I'm gonna mark on these. So the Workwoman's Guide states to use a marking ink, which I don't have. So we're gonna try it with like a, a, a period pen and ink and see if it will stay dry, look good. So I'm going to go grab my writing supplies and I'll be right back. It's just what I could grab. So let's just try marking. Um, uh, see that's not going to work as too. It's going to bleed. Okay. That's what I was afraid was going to happen. I wonder if I use a modern pen. That would work. I'm also wondering if it might just be better to embroider it. Um, I guess we can just use a regular pen. It does say to use ink, so let's go ahead and 
use ink. I looked online for marking ink. I couldn't really find something that looked like it may be here yet. I couldn't find any garbage when I looked online, so we're just going to use this. I'm going to do that later once I'm all done so I know where all the everything's going to lie. Okay, so the trim that the Workman's Guide specifies is Galoon trim, which I can't find anything that's uh, made of pure material, so we're going to use ribbon like we did the last time. I chose this lovely bright orange ribbon partially because I think it looks really cool. And also because I don't think I'm actually going to use this color for anything else. Um, I bought it for a project and then the project fell through and um, I decided I didn't like this ribbon with it and I used something else. So I have orange ribbon. It's not my favorite color so it's not something I would like choose necessarily. But blue and orange look together. I've seen it on original garments used together. So I think it's a period appropriate color matching. And so yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and use this. So what I think I shall do first is, same thing with what we did with the, with the 1850s one, is go ahead and encase all the top bits with the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and iron it in half. And this one's a lot smaller than the other one, so I think it's going to take a little, not as much time. And I know what I'm doing this time, so I'm going to go ahead and mark each one of these with pens from top to bottom so that I remember which ones go where. Alright, got the ribbon over the top, so I suppose it's about time to put it together. The top part is going to be split into three. Let me go while I have this pinned together and go get my little circular things from the 1850s ones just to make sure they're going to fit in the pocket. They're a little tight. But it looks like they're going to fit. That is a smaller pocket of the two, of the three, so if it fits in this one, it will fit in those, so we're good. Let's work on the next one. Alrighty, so it's looking pretty good. I actually really like the blue and orange, so I'm really happy with it. Um, not only did I attach the, or not only did I finish the uh, pockets, but I had to go ahead and stitch on the bottom on all of them because I needed to do that before I did the second part, and I didn't really even know that the last time I talked to y'all. So, yeah, um, I did this one with a running stitch because it's going to be hidden with the ribbon. And the rest of them I did by um, very tiny, painstaking back stitch because it's more secure. And that's what I did on all of those. So now it is time to encase the edges. And then we can go ahead and mark on it and be done. So, this is going together a lot faster than the 1850s one did, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the fact that I know what I'm doing now. And I have better directions. It's a lot smaller than the other one. Um, at least, at least it's shorter. But I kind of like it. I'm thinking 20 inch ties maybe. It'll wrap around this and then um, give me enough for a bow. If you're doing it at home, it takes a little less than five yards ribbon. It takes about four yards, I would say, to do this project because this was a roll of five yards, I think. And it's very nearly done now. Alright, I get to sew this together and put on ties. Okay, so I have finished sewing it all together and realized that I forgot to put the lining on the back. So I'm going to take all this off again and put this on the back and sew it back up again. I should have noticed those on the I should have noticed the stitching on the back. I even turned it over a couple of times and noticed the stitching. Did I realize that it wasn't supposed to be there? No, I didn't. So that's okay. I'll do it. We'll do it again. It won't hurt me. It won't take too long. It only took me about 15 minutes to put it together, so five minutes to take it apart, two more minutes, 
be done less than half an hour. It'll be okay. All right, it is fixed. So we have a finished little tidy. And there's the side of it. All nice with no seam, up, seam allowances on it. And we can go ahead and mark. I've experimented with a couple of different pins and I found that my flare pins seem to look the best. So we're going to go with this. And yeah, I guess we can just go ahead and do it. <laughs> are not centered. <laughs> it's okay. No one else is going to see this but me. And whoever watches this video. Oh, let's see the round pomade. Okay. And we're going to do hairpins. Alrighty. There we go. I guess we can fill it now. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and fill it. I'm going to grab some stuff. I know I have plenty of pomade and that sort of thing. I might have to cut, I might have to make some more labels for things. We'll figure it out. I'll be back. So it just occurred to me that I have not read to you the instructions for making this case. So I thought we should go ahead and do that. So on my copy, it is on page 208 and it's the traveling dressing case or tidy. And it, uh, it shows the picture on plate 24. And it's figure three. So it says these are most useful things and no one who has once used them will travel without them unless they can conveniently carry a dressing case with them. They are made of Russia duck, ticking, or stamped cloth or any other firm material. In making up the greatest exactness is required in making the parts fit truly. The back, which is all one piece, is lined with strong calico and various pockets are then laid on, the bottom one being sewed a little below where the top of the next will come so that the whole has a neat appearance. The sizes of the pockets given in the plate allow for this wrapping over. The top of each pocket is bound with purple or other colored galloon, and the divisions for the smaller ones are formed by stitching a piece of narrow galloon neatly drawn upon them. The whole is then bound round with galloon and strings of the same color fastened to the pointed end. So as to tie around the dressing case when it is full. As purple galloon will wash well, it is best for this purpose as most other colors fade. On each pocket is written with, Martin, with marking ink the name of the article to be contained in it. These of course differ according to the fancy of the owner, but the most usual are curl papers in the triangular pocket of the top, H for hairpins, W for thread, tapes, buttons, etc., C for, or S for soap, P for tooth powder, T for toothbrush, which ought to also be enclosed in an oil silk bag. C for comb and B for hairbrush. All right, so the bag is done and I have all the articles together, um, except for an oil silk bag for the toothbrush. I still need to put something together for that. Um, not quite sure how that's going to work um, because oil silk is difficult to get. I don't know, I might try oil oiling some silk and seeing how that works or I might resort to beeswax on cotton cloth, which is what I do for the soap. So we shall see. So I have the lip salve. It'll fit nicely in there. Tooth powder. I think that one's a little tight. I don't know why it fit earlier when I tested it. And then there's the pomade. So I'm going to put the soap in here. There we go. Hairpins I just put in this bag that way when um, this gets tipped over, they won't all just fall out into the floor. I thought that would be safer to contain them that way. Toothbrush. And my brush and my comb fit in here nicely. And there we are. All my little articles packed nicely, so we can just fold this up. It's not so tidy once it's tied and bound up. There we are. But at least it contains all the articles. So there we are, my nice little tidy. And we can move on to the next bag. All right, next bag we're gonna make is a housewife, which is kind of like a little sewing kit. Um, and so on um, my copy works woman's guide, it's on page 212, and it's down at the bottom, and there are three plates. So the first two plates, plate 19 and 20, are two different ways 
to um, tie up the bag and then plate 21 or figure 21 shows the housewife unrolled and so it says this is made of leather stamped paper silk ribbon satin velvet white dimity holland or any other material even common common print two pieces the sizes sizes of a b c d are first of all cut out and back stitched along as to form thread runners after which another piece e f g h is cut out and the pl pieces and the places for the scissors bucket etc et made and then a long strip is cut not only sufficient for the whole length but turned over at the end to form a pocket the other pieces are neatly bound to it and the flannel or Kersey more for needles is added. The initials may be put on the slope end. The case may wrap up like figure 19 or 20. So, essentially there are no measurements whatsoever, which uh, is unusual for the um, working with guys. This is the, y'all can see that. This is what it looks like. So it's just, there are threads at this end, and there's A, B, C, and D. This is where you put the thread. So you just run stitches, and there's these little channels, and you just put the thread through that's just there and you can just pull out whatever you need at the time and there's F wait sorry that's E F G H which is where the scissors bodkin and whatever else you need and then there's a part to fold over so there are no measurements whatsoever so what I did to figure out how big this needs to be is I put this on my computer and I enlarged it to be where because I know my scissors that I'm going to put into this housewife are four inches long so I needed something that was over four inches. There's a little bit of excess here. So I'm going with a five inch wide strip. And so when I made this five inches, I measured how long that would be. And that's going to, that gave me basically what I'm going to use as far as measurements. And I'm sure since it didn't add measurements that you could do whatever you, whatever suited you. That's just what suits me. So that's what I'm going to do. So for my measurements, what I just, what I figured out, and I'm going to start from this end and just work my way that way. It's going to be easier for me than doing the middle and then adding the ends. So I'm going to do this part first. This part needs to be three and a three and a quarter wide by the five inches. I'm going to use the gray polished cotton for this, and then we're going to trim it mostly with, with the leftover orange from the um, tidy. Then I'm also going to use some of the green that we're using for the um, nightgown bag mostly because I didn't have enough orange. So, it'll tie it all together. Okay, so we're gonna use this. And I want it to be, it's five inches, so I probably want the biggest one to be, let's do four inches. Do I want to leave it at three or do you want to do well I just can't fit a fourth one on here, so we're gonna do three. What I think I'm gonna do first is um, do a little blanket stitch all the way across here to kind of decorate it some on all three of them and that way I might do it in orange, that way it's bringing out the green and the orange of the ribbon. I think that would be nice. Let's go ahead and prep the next piece. Okay, the next piece I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a little narrower than the picture prescribes, just because that's not really what I, I don't need something that large. And because this is just a little um, sewing bag for, for my nightgown bag, it's not going to be my actual sewing kit. I'm only going to include four colors of thread. Um, the ones I most often use would be black, brown, gray, and white. And so I'm going to go ahead and mark with chalk down the center. I 
thinking of making the next piece because it has to fit a variety of things. It has to fit. I'm pretty sure I want it seven and a half, but it needs my scissors. Ow, a bodkin, and I'm going to put a little um I'm going to put a tape measure there and then also this is not the button hook I'm going to use but I do need a button hook as well. The directions didn't say to but when looking at the original you can tell that there's a space like it says to cut two of this but to be able to put the threads through you need space here so I went ahead and cut like an inch off and then like fold it under so we have space to thread the to thread things, we have space for the thread, and then also I have a seam allowance to sew this onto other pieces. And I did not add a seam allowance to this little piece, um, which is where these are going to go, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut a new one. I'm thinking the easiest thing to do will be to sew these two together and lay these on top of that and use the ribbon to put these on. Instead of trying to sew through the whole thing, I guess I could try. Probably using a back stitch since it's more secure. The directions didn't say what kind of stitches to use, but the engraving clearly so showed this being um, stitched with a running stitch. But on the inside seams, I think I'm going to do a back stitch just because it's more secure. Alright, I think next step we're going to go ahead and put on the other side. Alright, so we are getting it done. Um, I kind of like these small little projects. It kind of makes me feel accomplished because I get a lot of things done in a short amount of time. So, I think what we're going to do now is cut out the backing um, so we don't see all the stitches and raw edges and such. We're going to fold this in half and kind of get a dome-ish shape at the top. That looks pretty good. And I already have it pinned together. The only thing I haven't done is added the loops here. Okay, so we have some of the pieces here. Going to the dog's chasing toys. I think we're going to. I'm going to mark where this is, and this is where my seam is going to be. I'm just going to do a quick back stitch. I think we can do it here. It'd also be really nice if I had a pocket, that way I could put things in there like ribbons for tuckers or just things that may go, that I may need that tend to go missing or that I lose. It would be very helpful to have um, extras and space for extras and know that they're there. Alright, we are nearly there. Um, I don't think I'm going to have enough orange ribbon. So what I might do is just start it here, go around, and there might be a couple of inches I don't have, and I might steal it from the ties of the tidy we just made, because they really don't need that long of ties anyway. It does! Ah! Oh, that is perfect! And no waste. Okay, yay. Worked out really well. Okay, could not have planned that better. And cut 10 inch wide string. Uh, 15 seems a little long. Let's make it 12 inch strings. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch all this on. 
can probably advertise and we can just wait and then it's just waiting for the other little sewing implements to come in so that we can put the thing together. Alright, so it's been several days and we got our pieces in. So here is the button hook that is silver, so it matches the rest of them now. And our little tape measure. So I did have to replace the ribbon. I didn't do a fantastic job because I did it by hand with silk ribbon. But it looks okay and it will measure. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Okay, let's start from the bottom, get that to where y'all can see it. So let me go find some needles, and let's get some like tapestry needles, some rather blunt ones. Sometimes these work better than a bodkin if you're um, putting a, a lace through a tucker or what have you. Okay, I think that's plenty of needles, grab some pins. I feel like that's very well stocked. Now the thread, which I assume just kind of fits within here. So I have all my cotton threads. And these are generally the colors I use. I only have four, so I think I won't do red. Um, but I feel like most of my sewing does get done with these four colors right here. So let's start with how long it needs to be. And this could fit nicely in our little pocket that we made. Okay. And there's our precious little housewife. I think that turned out cute. Okay, so the next bag we're going to work on is going to be the nightgown bag. Um, which is supposed to contain things like the nightgown, um your dressing, dressing gown or wrapper, um, the tidy, um, I'm going to put my housewife in there as well. So I got out a nightgown, it's actually my 1860s nightgown, but the only nightgown I have right now, so it's what's getting used, and it's about the same size as an 1830s one would be, they're just made slightly different, so the same amount of fabric's going into that. And I have my 1840s wrapper, um, which isn't perfectly period correct fabric yet, that was my prototype and I should be getting new fabric to remake it. And in a couple of days, um, we can work on that eventually. But I kind of fold them up to kind of see what I would need as far as sizing. So what I think I'm going to do, because I do want space for like tidy and such here. And also it's going to, because it's going to be a flat square, it's going to need extra to kind of go up because this is quite thick. So I'm thinking 18 inches by 22 inches, which is going to be quite a large bag, but um, actually I could probably do an 18 by 20. Let's do that. Let's do 18 by 20. I think for the ruffle, we're going to make it in the gray. Um, just kind of give it some contrast. So I'm going to cut the selvage off and we're going to cut some ruffles. It makes it so hard to get through. So I think I'm going to do is iron this, sew the ruffle together to make one giant circle, and then um, narrow hem it. I was thinking at first like fold it in half and that would be like way easier than actually having to hem it, but I don't know if I have evidence of that happening. So we're going to do it the hard way and narrow hem everything. So I guess I'll see you back when that is all done. Okay, so I stitched the ruffle. I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two front pieces and encase them in the Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do to sew this thing together is to attach the ruffle to the back 
and just attach it with a quick running stitch. Make it super easy. And then with all the layers, go over and back stitch it with very small stitches. And I think that would work. to sew on this part. Alright, so the engraving does show more ribbon or trim or whatever that was, because it's not actually say. I'm um, going around the edge here. I think I'm gonna leave that off. Um, make it a little plainer, just because I'm tired of sewing ribbon on. I've been doing it a lot lately. And so, so the original engraving shows a little dot here, and I'm or somewhere over here, and I, I'm assuming it's some sort of closure. I don't know if it was like a button in a buttonhole. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. I think I'm going to do eyelets and just tie it shut um, because it's a little circle and it kind of looked like an eyelet to me. I was going to do buttons and buttonholes when this um, folded over, but for some reason, even though I cut it with excess to fold over, it didn't end up folding over and I'm not entirely sure what happened. Maybe I just cut it the wrong size. And so it meets perfectly, so I can't do a button and buttonhole. I could do a button and a loop. Um, but I think it's going to be easier just to do eyelets. So I think I'm going to make four eyelets. Instead of doing one in the center, I felt because I have so many small things like the housewife and tidy that might fall out of these bigger areas. So I'm going to do two sets of eyelets and just kind of have it in thirds. I think that's going to be the easiest thing here. So I have some green thread that kind of matches the ribbon. And that's going to be what I'm going to use for the eyelets. Alright, we got four eyelets done. Let's go ahead and cut some ribbon to spread through this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stuff this out with the, um, not technically 1830s garments. Because this is what we got, so we can see how it works. It looks like a giant pillowcase. So there's our big nightgown bag. Open this up. Um, the fabric for the 8040 wrapper came in, so I think I might exchange this for the fabric. And then there's our little tidy. It can go in the corner here, and our little housewife. Has plenty of space over here. And there's still extra room in here, which is kind of nice. I think that turned out really well. I think that's a very useful project and I cannot wait for events so that we can, so that I can break this little one out and carry my stuff. It's going to be so much nicer not having to take 20 trips back from the car to wherever I'm staying just to be, just to find my night stuff. Have it all in one convenient, very obvious container, a pillow. They can stay on the front seat with me and in my car and that way whenever I get to place I just know to grab this and I can have everything in there with my wrapper. I may not use a nightgown, I'll probably put my underpinnings in there instead and just sleep in my underpinnings which is usually what I do anyway. And I have everything for the night that I will need. I have a sewing kit in case something breaks. Um, I will have my wrapper, underpinnings, I can get dressed in the morning and then in my wrapper go get the rest of my stuff which will be really nice when driving long ways to events. So 
Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next video.